I was wondering what would break first, your spirit or your wallet? Hello my friends and finally welcome back to Player Display for another review. Here we have a very long awaited pre-order being the Batman vs. Bane Nightfall 2 pack. This is one of my most anticipated McFarlane releases of 2024 and it's pretty obvious why. First of all we have two pretty much re-releases retools, repaints of figures we've seen before, but more specifically redone so you can embody the infamous Nightfall incident where Bane broke the bat, which I think is seriously awesome. We have seen these two figures before. We will do a size comparison later on and just do a little bit of comparison between the articulation, the joints, capes, all that crap. But for now, we have a really big old box to crack open. And before we do so, let's admire the box first. So here we have the front. Um, not a whole lot to stare at aside from the figures itself, but down here you do have Batman versus Bane. Off to this side, you get Batman versus Bane. And then on this side, pretty much the same deal, just in a different format. And off to the back, you have a really awesome portrait of, well, Bane breaking the bat, which hence the whole purpose of this pack, looking absolutely awesome. So without further ado, I am going to pull out Betsy over here, and we're going to take these figures out of their cardboard and plastic prisons. Actually, I really did want to take a pause here as I was undoing all the packaging. I wanted to note this really awesome backdrop. Looks like, um, I'm not too familiar with the comics, but it's sort of like an archive of all these relics from the different Batman villains we have over here. Like, we got Mad Hatter, we got Joker up there. There's a whole lot of different little items and Easter eggs. And one great thing about it is the figure stands and the cards are not glued to the inside of the backdrop. So you can keep this as a diorama, which is not very common from McFarlane. So I hope he does that from now on. That being said, if you pull up the main bubble where everybody is contained, you got the figures and accessories, you turn it around, that's where you get your cards uh, packaged together over there. And I imagine towards the bottom, yes, you have your figure stand. So I hope that's what they do from now on because I really do love the backdrops that they have. They're just always corrupted by those little pockets of plastic that you got to peel off. So that is a refreshing change. Before we get into the review, first we have two DC figure stands, and we also have one single trading card for the two of these figures. Would have been nice to have two, but I guess one is enough to be more situational rather than talking about each character individually. But we got the same poster over here on the front, looking very good. And off to the back, we have a little bit of a bio explaining the Nightfall event. There's a lot that we're going to be covering in this video, which is quite noisy because there's a shower up there. I got my fridge over there, so just ignore that. We're going to roll with the punches here. But we will start off with this Nightfall Batman. The second Nightfall Batman that we've seen from McFarlane. We'll look at the first edition later on. And I will say straight away, this might be one of my favorite Batman that we've ever, ever gotten from McFarlane. Um, he's an acquired taste. He's not for everyone. And I say that uh, for one reason that's kind of on behalf of both figures, is the fact that they're both stylized. Um, they are soul shaded, in fact. So that's why you're seeing certain darker lines around the mouth. You've got a little bit of a darkness around the rips and tears in the clothing. But that being said, that's part of what makes me love this figure so much more. It looks like he stepped right out of the comic, or rather crawled out, because he's been so beaten up and he's on his last knees at this point. But I think it's just so refreshing to have a battle-damaged Batman. I think that's very cool. So anyways, let's look at the finer details here and start up here at the cowl, looking really nice. I really love the ears that just go straight up and are quite long. I am a person who prefers longer ears as opposed to the short stubby ones. But over here, I really do love what they're doing. You also have some cell shading here around the eyes, which are whited out as they should be, as you do look in the comic. Now, one thing that's pretty next level is I really love what they did with the mouth. Whereas everything else feels very cartoony and comic-y, the mouth feels a little bit more gritty and realistic. You can make out each individual tooth, which is very nice, very precisely done with the printing or however it is that they do it. But you also have got like a five o'clock shadow and a little bit of blood coming out of his mouth, which I think is a really nice touch. Um, almost makes me wish that they would have done a little bit of more blood just throughout the suit. Because again, he's been beaten to shit, not just by Bane, but by uh, all the other members of his rogues gallery in a single night. So... I think it would have been nice if they would have spread it out the blood just a little bit more throughout this figure. But that being said, this head sculpt looks great. The only th other thing that I would ask for is maybe if the nose came out just a little bit more. It feels a little bit flat. Well, eh, 
I'm looking at it, it's not too bad. But that being said, this is one of my favorite Batman head sculpts ever. I just think it looks absolutely fantastic. You'll also notice there is a very bright blue. This blue is brighter than the blue that we saw on the original Nightfall Batman. So once again, we will do a little comparison later on. You can also see down here on the neck of the cowl, we do have a rip, which is almost reminiscent of the Bat logo right there. So that's kind of nice. Not sure if that was um, intentional or not, but that looks really good. On the torso, again, you have a little bit more of that soul shading, and I guess you can either see it... Oh, let me move that arm a little bit. Ooh, tough ratchet in there. Let's be careful. Um, <laughs> you will notice that there is soul shading for um, the wrinkles in the suit, which I think is really nice, but if you wanted to, you could think of this less as soul shading and more so as sweat bleeding through the suit. I think that could also work, but... Um, also, with that being said, we do have a very awesome looking, um, what I always see as a Tim Burton classic bat logo. You got the yellow oval and then the bat inside. That's very, very cleanly applied. There's no paint slop. Well, I guess there's a little touchy yellow right there, but I'm not going to nitpick that. That's a really easy fix anyways. Off to the arms, each of them have their own unique set of wear, and you got some rips, you got some shading in there, looking very good. Again, a little bit of blood would have helped, but it still looks very nice. Would, would be really easy to custom do if you so chose to do so yourself. I've actually seen some images on the internet of people custom weathering this figure, and they've done some beautiful jobs, so definitely check that out if you need some inspiration. Down here at the gloves, we got three traditional fins, and you got some really nice blue-looking hands. Very, very good. Down to the torso over here, the ab portion rather, you got a really big rip and you got some of that painted in flesh tone looking very beautiful. Um, it's a little light compared to the mouth sculpt, honestly. So once you see that, it's a little hard to unnotice, but not the worst thing ever. I've seen worse than that. Um, the utility belt is also very good. It also has some of that cell shading. It's done in a very stark, bright yellow, but then you almost have this mustard um, color to sort of accent it going a little bit around, giving it sort of a trim, which I really like. You also have a blue diaper. I always preferred the colored Batman underwear or whatever it is you want to call it. Just brings out a little bit more punch. I really appreciate that. More weathering going on down the rest of the legs, looking very beautifully done. And you also got the traditional blue boots. Last thing to talk about this base figure before we get into accessories is, of course, the cape. Now, I really love this cape, but it's not perfect. Um, the first thing I notice is it's quite tough. It's not as flowy. It's made of a very rigid material. I think that's because we've got the blue with a black trim underneath, again, giving him more of that comic feel. So it looks great. It just doesn't have a very nice natural drapiness to it, so that bothers me a little bit, but not too much. And another thing which you'll either love or hate, I think, is the shininess of the blue, which definitely does not match with the cowl or the rest of the blue. But I do, at the same time, really like it. I think it's really pretty. It makes this Batman stand out a little bit more. In fact... Um, this is obviously a wired cape. I wonder if you could drape it over the shoulders? Um, not really, but I guess if you really forced it, you probably could. But, yeah, it's a nice cape. I like it. Um, then again, I could also say there could be some tattering in the cape to match the rest of the suit. But then again, just get some scissors, snip, snip. You can get some holes punctured in there. I'll think about it. I'm not sure if I want to customize either of these two figures at all because I love them so much as they are. But that being said, this is a very good Batman. As for accessories, we'll just hop right in. We have four alternate hands. So we got two fists right over here, uh, done in the same blue. There's no weathering or extra paintwork or anything like that. So those are very nice to have. And then we also have two splayed out hands. They could be gesturing, they could be like, cramping up or whatever. Again, this is a battle damaged Batman, so he could be in a great deal of pain. He could be using this to gesture his agony if you wanted to. So really nice to have those as well. They have a very awesome, classic-looking Adam West Batarang, which is very good. Um, I'm really happy to have this because I have actually misplaced the alternate hands and Batarang that go with... Um, no, you saw the Batarang, but I've misplaced the other hands that go with my current Nightfall Batman. So, obviously, this guy's going to take his place. But, anyhow, we can quickly do a few part swaps just to experiment. He comes with two gripping hands by default, so we will put the Batarang in this hand. And it should be pretty simple. I mean... I like how you've got those little um, indents in there, so it's meant to fit around his fingers. Um, yeah, it's kind of twisted in, and all right, maybe bend out the fingers a little bit. It'll have an easier time, but come on. All right, a little bit slippery, but uh, I'm sure you can get it in there. It's not the tight grip. There we go. You kind of got it. You get what I mean. You got to hit a sweet spot, but it's there. Um, in fact, you could probably put it in between 
the fingers, and that might not be too bad. Yeah, you can put it in between the fingers like that, so that's not too terrible. As for swapping out the hands, let's see what that's like. Um, oh, came out like nothing, not even a pop, so that's really good. And then you can pop on any other hand of your choosing. This one's feeling a little bit tight. Don't know why. It's got to hit the sweet spot. It's a little annoying with the cape in the back, I'll be honest. But give a little twist. There we go. And then it locks in pretty good. So, yeah, really awesome Batman. Now let's move straight into articulation. Up here at the cowl, we have just a bold, uh, dumbbell joint between the head and the neck. So we have pretty good tilt. We have fair amount down. Uh, up a little bit, not a ton. So he can still be looking up at Bane, especially when you uh, consider the app crunch and everything. So we'll talk about those soon. Um, I did want to highlight that there is a lot of flexibility in the arms and shoulders. You can see just how elegantly that moves in there. So you got a butterfly, which is fantastic. So you can reach inward really well, go on out, does all the swivel you need. So there's a very good amount of movement up here. So I don't know what it is they did. It just feels like there's a little bit more space. So I do appreciate that. Bicep swivel, very important. Double jointed elbows. You have the traditional uh, McFarland wrist joints, which can go up, down, they move the hand, they can go sideways, left, right, whatever it is that you want. So very nice to have those. And they are textured in accordance with the glove. They're not just round spheres or anything like that. Down to the torso, you got a dumbbell joint between the abs. Excuse me, those are the abs. Then you got the pecs up here. He's got a little bit of tilt, good amount forward. Great amount back, so that's fantastic. If he gets punched straight in the face, then you can go as far back as you want. Also have waist swivel, and then that's also a ball joint in there, so that would contribute to helping him look up if he wanted to. Yeah, he can look all the way up, so that's really great. As for legs, um, I doubt there's any surprises, but you can kick out to the side and back in. Forward. Oh, the leg bends a little further up than it should. Well, then again, he's all broken and busted up, so I guess he could do that, but kick out, not a whole ton. Going back, once again, not a whole ton. It exposes the inside of the leg a little bit. And you also have no swivel. Well, do you have a swivel? No, there's a swivel in there. All right, so that's good. Double jointed knees. Can't quite kick his own ass, but it's in there. As for ankles, you do have a distinct swivel joint in there. You don't always get that, so that's appreciated. Comes up, goes back. Also got toe articulation, and of course, you got some rocker. Very good Batman. Is he my favorite of all time? Hard to say, but he's definitely up there. I do love him quite a lot. Now let's talk about this big old hulking Bane, one of the most exciting things about this pack. And this is partial reuse of the original Nightfall Bane, but there definitely are variations. We will have a look at that in size comparisons. But anyways, let's just go from head to toe as usual. Um, I really do dig the head sculpt. It is different from the original release. It's a little bit more baggy, as you can see from these wrinkles around the mouth portion. Of course, you got a Luchador mask, looking really excellent with the really bright highlighted eyes. I think those are fantastic. Again, he's trying to go more cell shady a little bit more so than the batman if you ask me with the little punches of blue throughout the suit looking very good going around the cowl or mask or whatever you it is you want to call it got more cell shading going on going all the way around to the top of his dome and back down to his ear i suppose if go around to the back of the head you actually see the beginning of the tube which goes up to his mask and down to his uh gauntlet his venom device thing i don't know what you call it exactly but got this very long silver tube which goes all the way down to this little band at his bicep and then down here to his gauntlet so that controls his venom inflow or whatever it is you want to call it uh this guy is beefed up on steroids which is really awesome and speaking of that that brings us to the main body and there's a few surprises in here the first big surprise one thing i already knew about but i'm so blown away by it is a very subtle detail but a very good one is the fact that they actually added body hair to the top of the shoulders and around to the top of whatever musculature you'd call this but that simple little detail just adds so much more to this character design. It makes him feel more comic book looking, and it just makes him feel a little bit more intimidating for whatever reason. On top of that, or rather below, is you do have a body wash going on. So it's like a darker wash on top of a flesh tone, and that helps to bring out all the musculature, the popped out veins and everything, and it just makes this figure look a little bit more beautiful than he could otherwise be without a wash. So I really love seeing that. 
You do see a wash on the original Bane as well, but the flesh tone, now that I'm looking at it off to the side, it's quite bright, but over here, it's a little bit more believable, so I'm liking that a lot. The arms are different, we kind of already talked about this. Um, one arm is totally bare, but it does have a glove down there with some white out knuckles, looking very nice. Off to this side, once again, you got the tube going down to this blue band. It goes all the way down here to this glove, which extends up here to midway down the, um, the arm. I'm not good with anatomy, I apologize, but once again, you see more of that cell shading. Back to the torso, you have his um, luchador uniform, which is, once again, speckled with some blue cell shading, a love or hate thing. Um, I suspect if you wanted to, you could just bust out some black paint and then hide all the blue if you really wanted to, to make him a little bit more realistic. But for me, I think I'll keep him like this. I actually quite like the cell shading. I think it makes him a lot more unique. You also have a really nice belt done in a silver with a wash as well, looking pretty sweet. Liking this a lot. It goes all the way around. They don't cop out on the back. It keeps going, so that's really great. Although when I am looking at the back, there is not a lot of cell shading, so that gives you an idea of what this guy could look like if there was no blue whatsoever and it was just some black. So total preference thing if you want to customize them. Again, that'd be really simple. Down to the pants, this is absolutely reused from the original Bane. Um, you got the blue going all the way down these cargo pants. Um, um, really nicely textured, got nice some, some nice pockets and everything, looking fantastic all the way around. You go down to some cargo boots with the laces and everything, and his big old clunky shoes at the bottom. So, really awesome looking figure. And he's also quite light on the accessories department. I don't think he needs a ton, but he does have more accessories than the original Bane, though, who came with none. So, that's appreciated. He comes with two fists, and I was really hoping, while I had the original Bane, that they'd release maybe some third-party ones that you could pop in or something like that, but that never happened. But regardless, now we have a Bane who can actually have fists, which he should. So it's really simple to just pop a hand out. Uh, they've re-engineered the arms a little bit, so that's a little bit easier. Now you could take any fist that you want and port it right in. Um, and it feels pretty good. A tad loose, but as well as all the way around. It's got a hinge in there. Um, does this have a rotating... It's not a full-on ball joint, so you can't have it going, like, up or down. But it's still a nice fist to have. Very refreshing change from what we saw originally on that first Nightfall Bane. So, anyhow, that is literally all his accessories. There's nothing more to say about him, except, of course, his articulation. So let's go over that. The head, um, it's not great, but... You kind of have a tilt and a go-down at the same time. So he's looking down as you tilt him, which is kind of nice. I like that look. It gives him some attitude. It's pretty cool. I can't imagine there's much back. Yeah, it kind of gets stuck on the neck right there. But he can go down a bit. So down just enough so he could be looking down on a typical 7-inch figure, being, of course, Batman. Um, on the torso, it's notoriously limited, but that's uh, the sacrifice of having good detail. Um, there's nothing at all in the abs or the torso whatsoever. You do have a joint in the waist, though, so you can do some swiveling. You could do a eh, touchdown. Better amount back, though. As for the arms, um, we'll test it all over here. The articulation is the same on both, but of course I want to be more wary on the left arm because of the tube. You don't want to break that. But over here, you've got full swivel all the way around. I also notice there's a little bit a free roaming in there. There's like some extra space in there so you can kind of rock it up and down just a tad. I don't think that'll make a huge difference. But that's an interesting detail to note. As for the elbows, they crunch and unfortunately this is the biggest weak point of this figure in my opinion is that it can't even meet 90. It's very short of that but it could be enough for you to break the bat. As for the wrists, they swivel and they hinge outward, then inward, but not up and down. That goes for the open hands and the fists as well. As for the legs, they kick forward. Very good, actually. It's going back quite a lot, but once again, you do have a big old gap in there where you can actually make out all the, all the articulation, so let's hide being secrets in there. And now we got knee joints crunching out really good, so I don't know why they couldn't have done the same treatment up here at the elbows, but whatever. A Bane's a Bane. I'm so very, very happy with him. Down here at the feet, we don't have a calf swivel, unfortunately. That would have been a nice place to put one in. Just have a really big fat peg. I could swivel right there, but not the worst thing. As for the ankles, though, you have good amount back, really great amount forward. You can see that it's kind of sculpted very deeply into the boot itself. And then you also have some rocker. Into articulation too. 
So a um, little bit of everything, not all that we want from a Bane, but it's still a pretty good amount of stuff. Um, then again, this is largely a reuse of the original Bane, so this would have been a good opportunity to give him a lot more articulation, like some new arms. Um, this is a new torso, so they could have done more articulation here, but then again, it does preserve the beautiful sculpt, sculpt work, the fact that we don't have a whole bunch of joints in here. So it's a pick-your-poison deal, but for me, I don't mind this guy. I think he is fantastic. Now let's do some size comparisons, starting out with Batman over here. Um, both of these figures are really good, although it's worth noting that on this particular Nightfall Batman, I have replaced the cape with a soft goods substitute, so just try and recall, envision in your brain, the solid cape that he used to have. Um, this wired cape over here, as much as I do adore it, um, it is flawed. Again, it's not as silky as I would prefer it to be. It's not the most mobile, but it looks very good. Then again, it could use some tattering. So again, it's kind of a mixed bag over here with this particular Batman. As for this one, though, I feel like he's a little bit too base. I wish that he had that extra kicker, that extra little something that makes him more interesting. Like this Nightfall Batman that we have over here that has the cell shading, uh, the really bright logo over here. And and the extra accessories, of course, a whole bunch of hands and a batarang. I think those are very important. I think one of the biggest differences is in the torso. You can see over here that the bat logo is printed on, whereas the other one is sculpted and raised. So that's the biggest difference between the two, in my opinion. The head sculpts are also different, of course, than the capes, and the color palettes also vary. So if you want to do head swaps and glove swaps, you're going to have to do some repainting, because obviously the two-pack Batman is a lot brighter. As for the standalone release, Nightfall Batman, he is a little darker in the blues, but it suits more of a cream. So these two are pretty incompatible, in my opinion. But then again, both are very good. You got to pick and choose. I don't think either of them are perfect, but they're both a lot of fun. Now here we have the two Banes, where I could pretty much say exactly what I just said about the Batman. I love them both in equal regard. I could really go either way. It really comes down to your preference of whether you prefer something that's very, very classic or a lot more modernized. So this isn't really a Nightfall Bane per se, but it's more of what I envision to be a Rebirth type of Bane. He's got more tubes, he's got a big old tank in the back and all of that. In fact, that's one of the way reasons that you can tell that these are indeed two different torso sculpts. The fact that you have all these buckles and cargo on this Bane over here, and there's a big old peg in the back where you, it supports the big old gas tank over here. So he has a lot more nooks and crannies going on. Whereas this guy is a little bit more stripped down. Again, more to reference his initial appearances in the 90s comics. I think if you had to twist my arm, I do prefer the two-pack Bane a little bit more. Um, so overall, I just prefer the two-pack figures more than the standalone figures. But really, I, I, see, I could see you going either way. I think they're both fantastic. Although... One of the biggest issues with this Bane is the fact that he doesn't come with his big old fisticuffs. Like, I don't know why, in what world you'd have a Bane without fists. I find that very strange. Like, why couldn't they have done that with this guy? Like, can he even remove his hands? Probably not. Um, no, they don't want to pop out. So, you probably need hot water and then you want to trim down the peg if you wanted to get this version with the fists. But even then, you'd probably want to paint away the cell shaded knuckles and also repaint the flesh. So, these hands aren't meant to be compatible with the original Bane. But that being said, I think they're both still winners. They're both really cool. Uh, the things that suck about them, though, is the fact that their accessories are limited and also the elbow articulation. I think that definitely needs a lot of help. But I don't know, maybe one day in the future we'll get a third Bane that looks just as good, but also moves around a lot more, but time will tell. Until then, as a last size comparison, we have our Star Wars The Black series, Mechamuck! I want to try breaking the bat, too! Can I try some of the venom you got? It would be extremely painful. Hey, I've been beaten up by three Spider-Men at once. I think I can handle it. Give me a second here. I don't like this! Help me up! Overall, I think this is a very awesome, though not quite essential two-pack. I think the really big thing here is that, well, quite literally, is that we get the second release of Bane, whereas the first release is very hard to acquire now. But if you do want this Bane, firstly, he is, again, very hard to get. And second, he is stylized. He's cell shaded. He, he is an upgrade in the ways that he should be in terms of articulation. So there are a few little nitpicks with this figure. But then again, if you just want a classic tried and true first edition Bane, I do think he fits the bill. I think he's really awesome and he's a lot of fun, especially with the fact that he's got fisticuffs to go with him. So I do appreciate that quite a lot. 
As for this Batman, though, as much as I love him, I can't say there are no flaws. I think the cape is his greatest strength and his biggest weakness. It looks fantastic, but it feels stiff as a board sometimes. It's very hard to get moving around and in the right poses that you want. And also, I feel like it should be more tattered rather than shiny. That would just be more befitting to the state of this current of this character as he stands, or as he is now crouched down on his knees in agony, if you will. That being said, I love everything else about the figure. I really love the head sculpt. The detail on the face is impeccable. And you also got the really bright, oversaturated colors to make him feel a little bit more comic-y. I really love this variation of Batman. I think I prefer the Batman more than the Bane, just on the fact that there are more changes from the original Nightfall Batman from the new ba the new Batman than we do see from the Bane. I feel like for the Bane, they could have gone a little bit further with this half re-release, half retooling. I just think there are some more steps that could have been taken to make this Bane one of the all-time greats. Not quite there, but still a really good one. That being said, this is a very hard pack to get. I remember as soon as he was announced, I pre-ordered them immediately like that, as I always do with any McFarlane releases I really want. So I'm very happy to have them as long as the wait as it was for me to get them. Um, so I'm hoping that anyone who missed out on this pack, who does want the pack, are able to find them and that they make enough quantities of them for other people to get. And as for those people who do manage to get the pack, I do think overall you will be pleased, but there are some minor disappointments in there. This guy should have more articulation, this guy should have a more free-flowing cape. I feel like if just those two t details alone are fixed, this pack would be a lot better. Then it would just come down to whether or not you prefer the cell shading or not. Personally, I think it's really interesting. Other people might be turned off by it, though. Then again, if you're a customizer, just go through both of them with some paint. You can fix that right up easily. Just paint away the blue on the Bane, and then paint away a little bit of the cell shading on the blue portions of the Batman. Again, the cell shading on the rips, it kind of looks like sweat. It looks like it's darker underneath the cloth, so when it peels back, you see a darker tone of gray. So that also still works. But that being said, great pack. I really do enjoy it, and I do recommend it, especially if you are lacking either of these figures. I think they're both fantastic. They require some work, but overall, I think they're fine additions to the McFarlane shelf. So all that being said, let's wrap up. I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you did, then please, as per usual, be sure to like, comment, ring the bell to be notified of our latest arrivals, and speaking, humbly reminding you to support the pod Patreon in the description to guarantee new content every single week. Thank you guys very much for watching. Rock on, and I will see you all later.